Hi everyone. I'm going to demonstrate how to do a shortened truth table uh, on the following problem. So whenever I do a shortened truth table, I just do a couple things very quickly. First is I'll just generate my um, list of atomics. So I have P, Q, R, S, T, W. Seems like a lot, but it's not a big deal. If I was doing a full truth table, this would be a mess. I would have a lot of rows. But the nice thing about a shortened is it doesn't really matter how many letters I have, it's pretty much the same difficulty all throughout. The second thing I need to notice is that this is not valid. I basically need to show that this argument is invalid by a us using a shortened truth table. There's two premises and a conclusion. Now to be invalid, that means it's possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false, and that's what I need to show. So I have to identify the main connective of each premise and the conclusion and set them to the appropriate truth value. So I look at this sentence here, this first premise, and I realize that the main connective is the negation, it's the only thing that binds everything, and I will set this to be true. I'll come back to that in a second. Over here, this is a lot easier to look at, it's also the negation, it binds everything, that's true. And then the conclusion, very straightforward, this must be false. Now from here we actually have information to go on. Let's look at the first premise. If this negation is true, that means the what's inside must be false. Now when I look at what ins is inside, it's pretty complicated, but what's inside, the truth value of what's inside, is determined only by the main connective of what's inside. And so the main connective of what's inside is this arrow, which means that must be false. And in fact, I can keep going. If a conditional is false, I know two things. First, I know that the antecedent must be true, which is this biconditional, and I know that the consequent must be false. So I set it like so. And in fact, this tells me something too. If a conditional is false, the antecedent, which is the S, must be true, and I'll write it underneath, and the consequent W must be false. So that was a really easy breakdown, and immediately I know that S is true, W is false, and actually now I can carry it through everywhere else. Well, W doesn't appear anywhere else, but the S does, so now I know this S is true, and I've learned some information. Okay, let's move on. Over here, uh, I have the, the negation is true, which means the biconditional must be false. And in fact, I sort of have to stop there. A false biconditional means both parts have opposite truth values, but I don't know if it's true-false or false-true, and that's why I can't actually do anything with this one. Also, that's why I didn't do anything over here. A true biconditional means both sides have the same truth value, but I don't know if they're both true or they're both false. So I move on. Now over here, again, we have some information. We have that the conditional is false, which means the antecedent is true, and the consequent is false. Now notice, this disjunction, I don't have enough information. A disjunction can be true in three different ways. P is true, Q is true, or both are true, and I just don't know which one. Uh, a conjunction can be false in three ways as well, but it turns out that if I know that S is true, so if I know that one of the conjuncts is true, and I know that the AND is false, that means I know that the R must be false as well. Why? Because if the R was true, then both conjuncts would be true and the AND would be true, but that can't be, it must be false. Okay, so that's great, so I can fill that in here r is false, I look over, and r doesn't appear anywhere. Okay, great. So at this point, I basically just have to make a choice. I have to have some sort of starting platform so that I can actually work. Um, and it's going to involve p, q, and t. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to guess. And in fact, I'll use a different color here just to be a bit safe to show that I'm guessing. So if I want this biconditional to be true, uh, I'm just going to make them true. No problem. P and T are true. So I carry that forward. That means this is true and this is true. Okay, well, a nice thing about this is if P is true, this disjunction here is also automatically true. So I actually don't even need to worry about what Q is for here. But over here, if T is true and the biconditional is false, that means both sides have to have opposite values, which means this negation must be false, which means Q must be true. So I could write that in there, and then Q true here. Does that check out? Yes, this is a perfectly good solution. 
Okay, so there's definitely another solution to this where I'd left P and T to both be false. Uh, you can try that on your own if you want. This is a nice example because although it looks long and complicated with tons of letters, it isn't long and complicated at all. You could easily solve this in a couple minutes. Just take some time to sort of go back, identify the main connective, and see sort of the flow of how we would share the information from the question. The last thing is, when you're stuck, which is often the case in biconditionals, you just pick away and just go for it. It doesn't really matter which way you pick. If you run into a problem, you can just try the other way. Okay, try this one out. Good luck.